Oh, hi there. You, you guys caught me working on a wiring harness here. Uh, I've been out here quite a while going through this. Let me pause that music so I don't get no copyright. We don't want to get copyright. Uh, I've been out here for a while going through this harness and let me show you kind of what I'm doing here. So this is the V6 harness, the original harness to the car. On the wall here, I've printed off of LT1Swaps.com the wiring schematic for the PCM that I'm putting in the car. And on this wall over here is the wiring schematic for this particular harness. Okay, so what I have going on is the clear connector for the V6 harness, the blue connector for the V6 harness. Using these pinouts, I'm able to find the pin because these are all numbered one through, I think it's 80 on the clear and one through 80 on the blue. So I'm able to locate those pins using the pinouts for that particular PCM. Then I can go to the PCM pinout that I'm going to use and I can notate where that particular circuit is on the V8 PCM that I'm gonna put in and then I just label it with some blue painter's tape and kind of kick it aside. So, so far I've been able to get this rat's nest all labeled. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is obviously I'm going to be using a different PCM and different connectors, but I want to leave the stuff that's stock to the car, as much of it as I can anyways, functioning. So if I move the pins in the PCM and then just plug in the V6 harnesses for the car side where they originally were, that stuff should work. So I'm just gonna kinda continue on going here and I'll check back in with you guys when I have a, a little bit more headway made and we'll see what happens so for me it'll probably be a while for you guys okay let me show you what i've done here i i've seen videos with people doing harnesses but I've, i haven't seen one with this particular swap going into any kind of depth um mohawk motors did a pretty good job of explaining some of this uh jason i know you probably don't watch my channel but you're awesome dude um so here's what's left of the v6 harness i've got the wires stripped out pretty good i went so far as to even strip out the transmission harness which is right here Here's the big transmission plug. I've got them all labeled so I know where they're gonna go. This harness right here, let me grab this end. So in the fourth gen Firebird Camaro, these plugs are in the kick panel on the passenger side. They run through the firewall, through this grommet, and they land on the PCM 
obviously in various locations. And then this end, and there's, I don't know, I think three plugs like this. Take you over to the car. This harness right here, this is the car side harness. These plugs, this one, this one, this one are on the car side and the PCM wiring and then you have some ignition lines in this big purple one. That's the starter and that has its own little plug right here. So I've stripped all that out, labeled everything on where it goes. And then what's going to happen is I'll plug the other ends into here. It'll go through the firewall. If you can see where it goes, you see that hole. My arm's in the way now, but right down there. And then right here in this passenger kick panel is where the other end of that white and blue plug goes. So to that end then, everything that is controlled by the PCM and goes to the car side should function. Now I found some wires that were in the V6 harness that I can't find in the V8 harness. So they're either gonna be unused or I'll figure out what they are through process of elimination. Um, so now what I have to do is, that's the V8 harness. So basically I'll have to do the same thing I did with the V6 harness. I'll strip the V8 harness down, unpin it where I need to unpin it, and repin these into their location. So I just labeled these like this wire, green 64. So that tells me that on the V8 PCM, the green plug, spot 64 is where that wire is gonna go. So that kind of brings you guys up to speed thus far. I'll probably record a little bit of when I go to unpin the V8 harness just to show you guys how to unpin it and take the Molex connectors apart. There's a bunch of videos on it, but I kind of feel like I'd be doing you guys a disservice if I didn't show you that, so you're not having to jump everywhere. So obviously my channel's the only channel that you guys, you know, are gonna watch. Uh, so I'll show you how to D-pin and stuff like that uh, later on in this video, maybe, maybe even the next clip. Who knows, because I don't know where I go or what I do, I just do. That's why it's chaotic around here. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'll be back. Okay, I wanna show you how to go about de-pinning one of these PCM connectors. So, let me get you adjusted here. So this is the green one, this is the blue one. I label it because once you pull this off, you're not really gonna know. So I use my handy dandy little pick here. And I don't know if you can see, but there's just a little right here, green, green, white. You just push in, let me see if I can, hopefully this, you guys can see this. I don't know where the camera died, so we're gonna go through this again. So there's a white tab right in here. So I use this pick tool and I just stab that tab and now that you can feel it, it comes free. 
you want to lift, keep tension on it, and stab this other side, and it'll come up. Sometimes they clip back down on the other side, but that's okay. You just pull it off. Now, without these on, you're not going to know what connector this is, so label it. Okay, so then when I depin these, see it now you got access to your pins. So when I depin this, I like I want to take this one out right here. And it's in spot 63. So I call this green 63. I just take my little pick and just wiggle it in there. Pull it out. Then you can just finish pulling that wire right out of the harness. There you go. Now you don't have a G or green 63. But I will have a green 63. What I'm doing, what I'm doing is I'm going to use the transmission harness out of the Firebird. So I depinned it from the V6 harness, labeled all those wires, made sure they correlate on the V8 harness. So I'm stripping the transmission wires out of the V8 harness and I'll tape it up, make it all nice on the V6 one that I took out and repin it back into the V8 harness. I feel it's a little bit more work. You probably don't have to do that because the harness is the same, but in my opinion, the way that I want to do it will make it cleaner. So I'm going to continue on with that and I'll check back in with you guys later. Oh my gosh, what a mess. Wires everywhere. So I'm pretty much going through and just depinning the PCM for the V8 harness. And then I'm taping up uh, and making things nice. I'm not gonna loom them right now, uh, but I will after it's all said and done. But as you can tell, it's just a big spaghetti mess of wires. So I'm trying to clean that up and to that end, I've got each kind of individual harness taped up together. And I'm finding what these are simply by tracing the wire back to the PCM and then cross-referencing that wire to that pin. And that kind of tells me where it goes. Uh, so that's what we got so far. So my math sensor wire loom is right there alternator exciter 
wires are right there, little two pin harness, coil pack harness, all the injectors, uh, oil pressure, cam position sensor, uh, just going through and doing it like that. So I'll just keep doing that until I run out of wires. Wish me luck. Got quite a bit done, guys. So yeah, I'm sitting on the floor here. Uh, and what I'm doing now is all of the wires that I unpinned and labeled from the V6 harness that are now plugged into factory harnesses on the V6, um, which are all right here. And some underneath that fender. This is the harness that would typically run over the fender well that I'm running underneath it to clean up that inner fender well. So what I'm doing now is I've got the V8 harness and PCM connectors, or at least what's left of it. And I'm just going back and I'm looking at my labels, my blue tape labels, and I'm unpinning those pins now from the V8 PCM plugs so that those will obviously be open to accept the new pins that are gonna go in here. So I'll show you, you know, a little bit of what I'm doing here. And then I wanna show you the, the engine part. Uh, it's coming along pretty good too. So I just go over here and find a wire that's labeled with an actual PCM pin location. I'm sure I can find one here. So this one I have labeled is blue 33. So I'll take that one and move it over there. Blue 33. So then I grab my blue harness I keep calling it a harness and it's more of a connector and I find pin 33 which is really hard for me because I can't see uh, so that looks like 29 30 31 32 33 and I'm not trying to pull the wrong pins, so I usually take a second here and just double check. And it's this purple one. And the one that I have labeled that's gonna plug into there is purple. So I am pretty sure this is the right one. Now I'm probably doing this a lot different than a lot of people would, but I want to make it as clean as possible and I just I don't know I just can't deal with the spaghetti rats nest of crap um <clears throat> there's gonna be some extra wire but there's a big cavity where this PCM goes so I'm not super concerned about it 14 blue 14 so blue 14 I've already removed blue 14 green green 50 so we go to our green connector and we find 50. And it's right here. And it's green as well. It's actually green with a white stripe, but. Who's counting? And then I just remove it. Kind of get it out of the way. 
So guys, I'll just keep going like that and pretty soon this entire harness will be de-pinned. Now, I'm not de-pinning wires that I know I have to lengthen, like this one. I de-pinned it from the actual other side. So I traced it back to this connector and I de-pinned it from here because I know that this wire needs to be lengthened. So that one's gonna stay in the PCM. So, yep, I'm just gonna keep on going and I'll check back in with you guys here in a little bit. Okay, so PCM location right there. These will all get dressed up. I've extended quite a few using these heat shrink solder connectors. And then basically you got powers and grounds. There's still a few wires that I have to figure out. I'm not sure what to do with them yet. But here's the engine itself. So I've got coils and fuel injectors, crank position sensor wire down there. Um, I've extended the first bank of fuel injectors. That's right here. I have to extend these coil packs yet. And this will all get loom, but for right now, you know, I'm just trying to make it somewhat organized. None of this has been dressed up yet, but it is attached to the PCM harness. This is the transmission plug, and I just have it running over and stuck behind there just to give it some tension on here while I work on this stuff. So coming along, I've got ignition through cranking and ground stuff right here. Uh, still have to extend those for the alternator and the engine coolant temp. Uh, my mass airflow needs to come back and then the AC pump stuff. Uh, but I'm getting there. Pretty soon this will all be dressed up. So if you follow your pinout configuration paperwork, if you download it from lt1swap.com, I believe is the website, it'd be really hard to screw it up. Um, I think I'm doing a little bit of a different application maybe because this car is a 99 so it already has you know had a computer in it and all that electronic jazz so i was able to just cross reference the two pinouts and unpin a, a molex and pin another one obviously you wouldn't be able to do that if you were putting an ls or vortec engine in you know something super old you'd be basically starting from scratch and a lot of the stuff that i'm trying to retain in this build you wouldn't retain or add to you know an old classic car or you know a ford or bmw or whatever you're going to put your ls into but since this car already had all that stuff you know all the smog control stuff all your emissions control stuff and already had a PCM and all that stuff I'm taking two harnesses basically and marrying them together so that all the factory stuff as much of it as I can make work will continue to function as designed so that's kind of where I'm at right now I'm just gonna keep plugging away on this harness uh, I'll probably cut this video off here. You guys get the gist. If you have any questions at all on any of this, shoot me a comment and uh, I'll try and answer it to the best of my ability. I'm no master at this by any stretch of the imagination, but wiring is kind of my jam. So, you know, there's car wiring and then there's wiring, you know, all kinds of different types of wiring. And I did car audio and security for 11 years, about 
18 years ago. Um, so I've got a bit of a background, but engine wiring is totally different than stereo and amp wiring. So there's some things on here that I'm not sure of that I'm researching and figure out, you know, do I need to maintain or retain it? Do I need to rewire it? Do I need to get rid of it? That kind of stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, if you have any questions at all, hit me up in the comments. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. And I'm out.